We are visiting the town of Knaresborough today in North Yorkshire with Ian and subscriber Keith. We're taking you around to see some of the sites of Knaresborough and adjacent communities. And stay tuned for the end of the video when I'll share the amazing drone footage Ian captured near the famous Viaduct Bridge. But first, let's stop by a couple wee villages near Knaresborough. So here we have the Guy Fawkes Arms in Scotland Village, North Yorkshire, Scotland. It's famous for the early life of Guy Fawkes of November the 5th reign in British history. Some magenta roses of some sort behind the Guy Fawkes. Ian, tell us what's going on on the side of the Guy Fawkes So arms. Banksy came here to Scotland Village <laughs> and he gave this depiction of Guy Fawkes here. And this is worth over 250,000 pounds. Okay, Ian is, Ian's doing his lying thing. Okay, no, look at what these are. He's dumping COVID-19 passports into the fire in Parliament. So here in the village of Scriven, I'll tell you what Keeping Up with the Joneses is all about. It's about who can have the nicest flowers climbing all over the front of their cottage. Because these are amazing. I'm going to show you like five of them. Those roses are incredible, a mix of yellow and red. And this one is just covered in ivy. And some roses over here on the edge. But I think this cottage here is the one that's gonna win the prize. This is the envy of the village. Look at this. Knaresborough is a town in North Yorkshire that I hadn't ever heard of before last summer. But when we were planning our northern expedition, one of the Magenta Otter tribe insisted we plan a stop in Knaresborough. It is a very engaging town that is part of what's affectionately called the Yorkshire Riviera, the stunning area along the River Nid. From the rich history involving characters ranging from monks to murderers, witches to civil engineers. Knaresborough has many stories to tell. And sights to see, including a ruin of a Norman castle and a viaduct bridge over the scenic River Nid that is a photographer's dream. So here's a lovely little home three stories up and the paintings on the top two stories are interesting this looks like a cavalier shooting his gun at this chap here dumping a bedpan out the window that's the story i made up the 14th century market square is home to an interesting variety of places to shop eat and drink this is the Lavender Tea Rooms, which is the oldest chemist shop in England. It's from 1720. I wasn't interested in tea, but I did fancy trying some of their chocolates. Of course, I was first attracted to the cute hedgehogs, but then I had to try a lavender cream, since the place is now called the Lavender Tea Rooms. And you can't go wrong with salted caramels. They were all delicious. This is Blind Jack, and even though he was blind, he was able to measure and create the first accurate, accurate maps of Knaresborough and surrounding areas. Yeah, all yeah. that's a total lie, so I'm not going to record <laughs> any more of that story. Uh, but what is true is that this is Blind Jack's pub over here. 
in the market square of Knaresborough. Ian's fabricated tale about Blind Jack did contain some kernels of truth. Blind Jack, whose real name was John Metcalf, was the famous engineer from the Industrial Revolution who is known for being a pioneer in professional road building, despite his visual impairment. He built roads throughout northern England in the late 1700s. And this is Milt Shipton uh, from medieval times, who was, who was, I guess, what we now call a witch. And uh, she used to make uh, prophecies about future events. Uh, how many have come true? I don't know. That's what she did in life. Oh, and this looks like a recording. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, you can tell they thought she was a witch from this sculpture. Yeah. Fascinating. Mother Shipton, whose real name was Ursula Santhiel Shipton, was born in 1488 in a cave on the banks of the River Nid in Knaresborough. She is claimed to be England's most famous prophetess, having allegedly foretold the fates of several rulers, as well as famous inventions, wars, and catastrophes, such as the Great Fire of London. She made her living as a fortune teller and managed to live to the ripe old age of 73. It seems like virtually every place we walk by in Knaresborough has a blue plaque telling its historical importance. And St. John's house is from 1490, which was before Columbus came to find America. There are a couple interesting places of worship in Knaresborough. There's the Holy Trinity Church on one side of town, then across town, the St. John the Baptist Church, with its unusual clock and sundial. And then there is the ancient and fascinating Chapel of Our Lady of the Crag. In 1408, this chapel was excavated as a wayside shrine by John the Mason. It's a sign of thanksgiving for his young son being miraculously saved from a falling rock. Henry IV granted permission for this holy shrine. All right, Keith is going to tell us about the Knaresborough Castle. The Knaresborough Castle itself dates from around about the 1100s in the Norman times. It did this, see a few, um, shall we say, small battles in, over the period of its history in roughly the, the 1170s. Uh, the guys who killed Tom Sir Beckett down in Canterbury escaped to Knaresborough uh, and there was a siege of the castle. So there was a second uh, uh, battle here during the English Civil War in, in the 1640s, uh, a siege by the uh, Royalists and par Parliamentarians, uh, and eventually after the Civil War, uh, Parliament decreed that the castle should be torn down. So that's why today it is very much a ruin. Uh, and uh, not really much left of the castle, but it is part of English history. The, as Ian says, the castle was slighted, which I didn't know that was a verb. So this is northern in the vernacular of architecture that we see here. You see that the roof tiles are very large at the bottom, just as in other areas as you get further up, the, the tiles get smaller. But they're stone tiles. In the south, you don't frequently see tiles that are this large being used. The um, pitch of the roof is not particularly steep. That's also something that for some reason you, you see here. And then the stone that's being used, you know, a stone that you see more frequently here, it's usually a, a, a grayer, browner, I guess you could say a browner stone. I'm not sure if you can see this from the video, but they constructed a pattern. They made the viaduct out of flowers, I think begonias. Here I am posing with Ian for the money shot of the Knaresborough Viaduct. Now buckle up and watch some delightful video of trains and the famous bridge and the lovely river.
I hope you enjoyed this little tour of Knaresborough and adjacent areas. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.